In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the more well-known movies filmed in New Zealand between 1980 and 1985. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. 1981 Goodbye Pork Pie One of the first Kiwi films to win local commercial success, Goodbye Pork Pie follows the exploits of the Blondini gang as they make their way from Kaitaia to Invercargill in a yellow Mini 1000, eventually pursued by the police as their infamy grows. This low-budget but thoroughly enjoyable movie was directed by Jeff Murphy, who apparently also performed some of the stunts. Jeff went on to direct other popular New Zealand movies from the 80s, such as Utu and The Quiet Earth, before heading to Hollywood, where he directed Young Guns 2, Free Jack, Under Siege 2 with Steven Seagal, and later became the second unit director for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. A remake was released in 2017, and although nowhere near as good as the original, is still enjoyable enough to watch if you've not seen it yet. Race for the Yankee Zephyr Although filmed in New Zealand, Race for the Yankee Zephyr was an international production that was originally set to film in Australia. After a disagreement with the Actors' Equity Association about importing overseas actors, the film was rewritten and set in New Zealand. Loosely based on a true story, the film stars Ken Wall, who later became well known playing Vinny Terranova in the Wise Guy TV series, Donald Pleasance and George Pappard of A-Team fame, as they all race to get to the Yankee Zephyr a DC-3 airplane that crashed during World War II in the New Zealand wilderness and contains 15 million in gold in its belly. Although overshadowed by Raiders of the Lost Ark that was released in the same year, Race for the Yankee Zephyr is a guilty pleasure and must be checked out if you like adventure movies with tongue firmly in cheek. The film's soundtrack was composed by Brian May from Queen. Smash Palace A powerful performance by the late Bruno Lawrence as a divorced father and ex-race car driver trying to get shared custody of his daughter after a messy separation with his ex-wife. As events begin to spiral out of control, he kidnaps his daughter and prepares for a standoff in the car wrecking yard he inherited from his dead father. Smash Palace was released in 1981 to critical acclaim. It was decided to release the film in the USA first, with the thought that any positive reviews would make it a more enticing film to watch in New Zealand. It worked and became one of New Zealand's biggest international film successes of the 1980s. Director Roger Donaldson went on to direct The Bounty with Mal Gibson and Anthony Hopkins and later in the decade Tom Cruise in the hit movie Cocktail. The film was also the debut for a then 10 year old Greer Robson and includes a soundtrack featuring New Zealand artist Sharon O'Neill. Bad Blood After refusing to hand over his personal weapons during World War II, New Zealand farmer Stanley Graham becomes unhinged, killing seven people including four policemen before heading into the bush, sparking a major manhunt involving local police, home guard and the army. This movie, based on a true story, was originally released as a TV movie in the UK before heading to cinemas in New Zealand. 1982 Battle Truck As Mad Max made post-apocalyptic movies the rage in the early 80s, New Zealand dipped its feet in the market with Battle Truck. Set in a futuristic 1994 landscape ravaged by the oil wars, better known as Otago, where it was filmed, Battle Truck tells the story of Hunter, an ex-soldier in possession of a tricked-up motorbike who helps a local township deal with marauding scavengers, led by Colonel Straker and his heavily armoured and weaponised Matt Black Battle Truck. Despite being a Hollywood production, the film used mainly local New Zealand actors and locations due to an ongoing writer's strike in the USA. Notable exceptions to this were the main leads, including Michael Beck, who also starred in a similar role the following year in Megaforce, James Wainwright and John Ratzenberger, who is better known to most as Cliff Clavin from the TV show Cheers. Kiwi's acting in Battle Truck included Bruno Lawrence, Mark Hadlow, John Batch and Marshall Napier. 1983 Savage Islands Written by John Hughes before he went on to bigger things with Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Savage Islands is a swashbuckling adventure movie starring Tommy Lee Jones as a seafaring captain who crosses paths with the loving couple Nate and Sophie. When Sophie is kidnapped by a slave trader, it is up to the two of them to save her. Financed entirely with New Zealand money, the film was shot in Fiji, Rotorua and the Bay of Islands, where a set of the Port of Samoa was reconstructed. Unfortunately, in the wake of other adventure movies at the time, mainly Indiana Jones, the film was a bit of a flop, but did mark the acting debut of Prince Tui Tekka. This movie is also known as Nathan Hayes in the USA. Utu. Often referred to as the Māori Western, Utu opened to rave reviews worldwide and became one of the most popular Kiwi movies up to this date. 
Set in the 1870s during the New Zealand Wars, Utu follows a Māori captain in the British Army, who deserts after seeing his own village massacred. He then creates his own rebellion and takes on the colonial invaders, including Williamson, played by Bruno Lawrence, whose wife is killed during the violence. Directed by Jeff Murphy, Uti was the largest film production to have come out of New Zealand up to this point and became the second highest grossing movie in New Zealand, behind his earlier work Goodbye Pork Pie. In 2016, Quentin Tarantino praised Utu as, hands down, the best New Zealand movie of all time. 1984, came a hot Friday. Probably the most popular New Zealand movie to come out of the 1980s, apart from perhaps Foot Rock Flats, Came a Hot Friday is based on the book of the same name and stars Billy T. James as the Tainui Kid, a local Māori eccentric who thinks he's a Mexican bandit, which won him the Best Performance Male in a Supporting Role at the 1986 New Zealand Film and TV Awards. Ian Mune picked up Best Director and the film also won another five awards. Set in 1949, the film follows two con artists who travel rural New Zealand using delayed horse racing broadcasts to con bookies out of their money. Unfortunately, they're found out after entering the small town of Tainuia Junction, where they also run foul of a local criminal, along with getting involved in bootlegging, arson and murder. Lucky for them, they've got the Tainuia kid to look after them. Death warmed up. I'll be honest, the only thing I remember about this movie is how the trailer and poster freaked me out as a young teen. New Zealand's first true horror movie, Death Warmed Up stars Michael Hurst as he tracks down the mad scientist who forced Michael to kill his parents when he was only a child. After seven years in a mental asylum, Michael heads to Waiheke Island with his girlfriend and best friends in tow, where he discovers the scientist now resides. Ready to kill the scientist, Michael must first get through the mind control zombies out to stop him. The film won the 1984 Grand Prix Award at the Paris International Festival of Fantasy and Science Fiction Films and then a year later was banned in Australia due to excessive violence. New Zealand actors in this include Michael Hurst in his film debut, Margaret Umbers and Bruno Lawrence in zombie mode. Vigil Filmed in Taranaki and the first feature film directed by Vincent Ward, Vigil tells the story of a young farm girl who witnesses her father's death whilst out herding sheep. Well, you can't get much more Kiwi than that. A hunter finds the dead father and carries him back to the farm, where he eventually moves in and starts a relationship with the mother, causing the girl to first fear him and then accept the loss of her father. Vigil was the first New Zealand film to be invited to compete at Cairns in 1984 and received a standing ovation. 1985 The Quiet Earth Another Kiwi film directed by Jeff Murphy and starring Bruno Lawrence, the Quiet Earth tells the story of a man who wakes up to find all humanity has disappeared from Earth. And the film asks the question, what would you do if you were the only person left alive? Touted as being the first major sci-fi movie to come out of New Zealand, the plot seems simple enough, but there's a few left turns in the movie to make the viewer wonder what exactly is going on. In particular, the final scenes. Astrophysicist and science celebrity Neil deGrasse Tyson named The Quiet Earth as one of his favourite science fiction films and overall it received good reviews when released. It has since become somewhat of a cult movie and although quite slow paced compared to today's Hollywood blockbusters, is refreshing to see a local film that doesn't conform to how a film should be made. Shake a Run If you want to see a pink Trans Am race through the glorious scenery of Dunedin, Queenstown and Blenheim, then Shake a Run is for you. The story follows an American stunt driver and his mechanic who are hired by a beautiful scientist who unbeknownst to them has stolen a secret virus she plans to give to the CIA. All with the secret military police and military after her. What follows is a Kiwi version of Dukes of Hazard, or perhaps Smokey and the Bandit, albeit with a more serious tone. The Silent One Filmed in the Cook Islands, The Silent One is a family friendly story about a deaf and mute boy who washes up on shore as a baby and is taken in by an island local. As he grows up, he is shunned by the local village due to his disabilities. The local priest thinks he's a demon, but finds friendship in a giant white turtle he meets in the ocean, where the boy feels most at home. When the village suffers both a drought and a storm, both the boy and turtle are blamed and ostracised. Boasting beautiful scenery and underwater photography, this was the first New Zealand film to be directed by a woman, Yvonne Mackey. That's it for now, but please keep an eye out for part two of this video series where we'll take a look at New Zealand movies from 1986 to 1989.